Welcome back to another episode of Monday Mod Tips. As you can clearly see, I'm currently in the middle of stuff, but it is Monday and I do need to put out my mod tips. And uh, something that was requested a number of times recently uh, was paint jobs. So, since what I have been working on uh, for the, pretty much the entire last week has involved a lot of paint jobs, now is the time to do it. So, uh, we're going to start with the very basics. Uh, what paint should you use? This is something that I see posted on a lot of the Facebook boards and a lot of my comments. Uh, what paint should I use? So, there are really three options that I'm going to recommend. They're all ones that I've used and have had uh, varying degrees of success with. The first is good old Krylon Fusion, which uh, specifically is designed to bond with plastic. It can be gotten at most uh, places. Walmart, I think, carries it. Uh, Home Depot probably carries it. Uh, most hardware stores that have any kind of a paint section are probably going to have something like this. And it does work. Bonds with plastic, obviously. Uh, and it does come in a good variety of colors. It gives you the basic instructions. Uh, if you have any real questions on how exactly spray paint works, uh, and if you're that new to it, uh, you should probably get someone to help you. Um, the next option, and the one that I actually use more often, is Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover Paint and Primer. Uh, it also specifically says that it bonds with plastic, so it works very good for Nerf guns. Um, I've had better luck with this as far as getting it to actually uh, coat and stay on. Um, and it also is available at most places, Walmart, Home Depot. I'm pretty sure I get most of mine at Home Depot. Uh, and it also has a wide variety of colors. And I like that it tends to come in um, flat satin and gloss. Most of my personal stuff, I definitely prefer a, or a flat or a satin finish. I do not like gloss finishes on most of my things. Um, but I have had people who specifically requested a gloss finish. So uh, I like that they have all those options. But in general, uh, what I would truly recommend, and what I have definitely converted to the ways of, uh, is vinyl dye. Uh, and this is generally going to be available at uh, car parts stores. I get mine at either uh, either O'Reilly's or AutoZone. And it is still a spray paint, essentially, but it is specifically designed to dye plastics. And there are some plastics that it has proved to not work on, but Nerf plastic, it works very well on. What it absolutely works magnificently on are 3D printed parts, which soak it up like a sponge and uh, definitely uh, dry practically instantly. Um, the downside to vinyl dye, uh, it is a little bit more expensive. It's generally going to be about twice as expensive as a can of spray paint, but that means that it's $7 instead of $3.50. So uh, it's not a huge difference as far as actual cost. Um, and it's definitely, in my opinion, worth it. One thing you, another thing about vinyl dye is you do need to let it sit, or you really should let it sit, because it is actually dyeing the plastic, and it needs time to cure. Um, so if you want the best results, you should leave it sitting for almost a day, um, and then it will truly adhere an actual bond of the plastic and dye the plastic. So you're not just coating it, you're actually changing its color. Um... The uh, the other nice thing about vinyl dye is that you don't have to do as much prep work because it is not, once again, not just coating it, it's actually changing the color. So it's not as necessary to sand as much, but it is still always a good idea. Um, the down definite downside to vinyl dye in my current uh, experience is the color variety is far, far less. Um, you're lucky if you can even get the eight primary colors. I have yet to find a vinyl dye uh, locally in orange. I have found it online, but it's $19 a can. Um, but you can get, obviously, red and blue, and I think I found green. Uh, found two different shades of gray and black in both flat and gloss. Uh, but you do have to look carefully. Uh, it, where I found it is actually only says it on the label, whether it's gloss or Flat. It doesn't say appear to say it anywhere on the, the front. You can kind of tell by the caps, but if your caps get um, messed up, then you've got nothing but the little label on the back, uh, whereas these usually say it on there. Um, but since uh, most of my stuff I paint black, I'm okay with only having those color options. Um, I would like to get an orange can eventually so I can do things in, uh, have orange as the primary color instead of black and get more of a gear up look. Um, but I'd have to spring for that $19 can, and I haven't broken down and done that yet. But 
Um, in general, I definitely like the way vinyl dye works better than regular spray paint. Um, now, this is something that I don't personally do on my own blasters, and some people have criticized me for it, but uh, and they can go right ahead. I actually don't use clear coat once I'm done, but if you want your paint job to last, if you've put a lot of work into it and you don't want it to get marred or scuffed or scraped, uh, clear coat is a very, very good idea. Um, and it also comes in matte, uh, satin, and gloss. And it actually can take a gloss paint and turn it into a matte paint, which is nice. Or at least knock it down to a satin. Um, and it also, the stuff that I've used also dries very, very quickly, but it is very, very pungent. So you're going to want to do it in a well-ventilated area. Um, but once you've got your paint job completely done and you like exactly where it is, you hit it with the, the clear coat and it uh, will protect it better. It won't protect it 100%. If you hit it with something, you know, scratch it with something enough, it will uh, get through the clear coat, but it definitely helps. Now, I don't use it because I like my blasters to wear with age because it makes them look like they've actually been used. Um, and a lot of people actually spend a lot of time and a lot of effort into doing um, a weathered look on their blasters, and I just let nature weather them. Uh, you don't get anything quite, as, you know, artistic, uh, but you do get something more authentic, in my opinion. Uh, so, all of these work. Now to general technique. Um, you are definitely, we're going to use this random shell uh, as today's example, as opposed to, I don't actually have anything that hasn't been painted already. So, we're going to be using this. And you should, in general, sand your blasters. And a lot of people sand it uh, in order to take off all of the writing. This has writing all over it. Uh, warnings and the logos and stuff like that. Um, the uh, patent information, all that sort of thing. People will often sand all of that off um, for aesthetics and that is lovely. Um, you should also generally give it at least a light sanding because it gives the paint something to more easily adhere to. The paint should um, fill in and disguise the scrapes created by the sanding. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, you can go with a really fine grit sandpaper if you really want to keep it clean. But you should definitely sand it. You should also remove any stickers because uh, paint does not react well to stickers. Uh, and in order to get the um, adhesive off, the, the gummy stuff, you can either scrape it off with a razor blade, you can just friction rub it off with your fingers. Uh, or if you really want to get it really off of there, um, get a a product called Goo Gone uh, that is specifically designed to get that stuff to come off and you just rub it on there and then wipe it off with a paper towel or something uh, and it will get it very clean. You should also definitely wash the blaster. I mean, if, you want, if you're once again doing a really complicated, really, really pretty paint job and you really want it to last, um, sand it and then wash it, let it dry and then you're going to want to prime it. And I recommend priming in gray as opposed to white. Um, you should definitely not prime in black unless you're going to you know then do more coats of black now some of these do specifically say that they are paint and primer which means you paint it once with that color let it dry good and solid and then paint it again with that color as the second coat uh, you will often need more than one coat um, so that is definitely a good idea the place you definitely need to sand and this is something that I have failed to do in the past and it has uh, come back to bite me any pre-existing paint on a Nerf blaster, you absolutely need to sand off because the paint will not adhere to it properly. Uh, and it will pool and it will crack and it will do all sorts of unpleasant things. So you definitely need to sand off any of this pre-existing paint because it seems to be more of kind of an enamel. Uh, and it does not paint down. The vinyl dye doesn't like it. Spray paint doesn't like it. You need to sand that stuff off or you're going to end up with it showing through. Now, in some cases, I have done that on purpose. On some of my um, patrons' paint jobs, I actually intentionally didn't sand it because I wanted that to come through because it fit with the motif. Um, but in a lot of cases, it's, it's just not going to look good. And if you're wanting to paint the whole thing a different color or you want that stripe to be a different color, you're definitely going to need to sand it off. So keep that in mind. Um... We're now going to actually uh, paint this thing so you can kind of get an idea of how I paint anyway. Um, I, I am by no means an expert, but I've done it a couple of times. So I'm going to show you uh, how I go about doing the actual coats. So let's go over to my 
painting table. So general, this is the item we're going to be painting, and we are first going to just rough it up ever so slightly with a bit of sandpaper. This is 150 grit, but it has been used a lot, so it's probably not actually that grit anymore. And we just want to kind of knock that glossy look off of it. Uh, we don't want deep gouges, and we don't need to to sand it a whole lot. We just need to get break the surface so that the paint has something to properly adhere to. And then ideally you would then wash it to get all of the, the dust off, but this is scrap that is for testing. Alright, we're going to be priming in flat white. Be sure to give your spray paint a good shaking. And never do your initial spray right onto your object. I always keep a piece of scrap paper that this is probably half an inch thick with how many layers of spray paint I put on it. And just give it a spritz until you're getting a good, a good um, thorough spray. Because the first couple of spritzes are not going to be, and uh, you don't want that splatter on your paint. You're then going to, you don't want to get really, really close, and you don't want to do a constant spray. You want to do it from a distance, and in little puffs. Do not try to get the whole thing 100% coated on the first go. You're not going to, and if you try to, what you're going to end up getting is pools and runs and drips. So, a light coat. Just get most of it. If you were to, I'm not sure how well you can see, but uh, I haven't gotten like right on the edges and in the little cracks. Those areas have not yet been really well painted, but that is okay because we're going to do multiple coats. This is basically the priming. Uh, and this is pretty much all you would need to do for the prime, is just slap a coat on there, let it dry completely, and then come back once it's dried and hit it with the next color. And again, light puffs. Don't try to get every single nook and cranny on the first go because you're not going to and it's just going to end up pooling and it's going to get too thick and you're going to get runs and it's going to be a mess. So light coat let it dry, hit it with another coat, let it dry, hit it with another coat, and then generally the last step is you're going to actually put the two halves of the blaster together, because right along the edge tends to be where you miss. So you're going to put the two halves of the blaster together, and you're going to paint that seam, and make sure that it's actually solid. Um, and be sure to give it a good look over, because like I said, um, I've done this one four or five times probably, and I still managed to miss this edge because I just hadn't looked at it from that angle yet. So um, don't be in a hurry. This is not something you want to rush. If you're, if you're just like me and you just vinyl dye it black and throw it back together with all the orange parts, then that is pretty much it. Um, but if you're going to be doing something really detailed, take your time. You don't need to be in a hurry. Um, this is not something you want to rush. If you rush a paint job, you end up with a lousy paint job and you end up having to sand it all down and start over. So take your time. Light coats, and then come back. And that's that's pretty much the basics of painting, really. Um, I will do additional videos eventually on how to tape things off and how to hand paint things, but this is the initial base coat. How do you prime? How do you to do the main coats? So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comment section below. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.